Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This video is a continuation of our Windows Server Home Lab series and this is the sixth episode and we are going to be focusing on security policies on this video. So we are going to be implementing the essential security measures for all of our computers in the workplace. So in this video, we are going to be covering how to implement security policies and security policies are a set of configurations that can be applied onto the desktops to enhance their security and security is very important in the workplace. We also have a request from the comment section to cover different password rules for different users. For example, letting admin making basic passwords but have strong password rules for standard users. So later on, we can also make different settings for different users users just like from this request we can set up different parameters for IT admin and different password parameters for the users so if you're interested in today's video please keep on watching and without further ado let's get started okay so if you're planning to follow along and create the security policies in this home lab you should check on the prerequisites first and you should have all of this first before you can do this lab so you should have a Windows server installed with Active Directory tool group policy management console and a windows client for testing that is joined to the domain okay so for our first activity we are going to do a password policy configuration and we are going to configure and enforce a strong password for all of our active directory users so this is really basic and we are gonna configure the minimum password length password complexity and password age in this activity because the default for the minimum password in windows server is eight characters and that is no longer the standard for strong passwords it should be at least 12 characters or more to make it strong in this digital age so we have to also protect our users from attacks by enforcing this security policy okay so on the windows server open the group policy management console and then create a new group policy object or you can also edit the default domain policy so for this case we are just gonna edit the default domain policy because we want this to apply to all of the ad users under our domain so you can right click on this and click edit and what do we choose in here is it going to be computer configuration or user configuration this needs to be applied to all of the computers when a user login. So we should select computer configuration in here and then select policies and then window settings and security settings. And then under account policies, there are different policy. But for this situation, we should be selecting password policy. And this is where you can set up the different policy for strong passwords for AD users. So first, we can select Enforce Password History in here. This is setting up how many passwords the system should remember. And then we can also set up the maximum password age on when the password should expire. Usually, we do it every quarter at work, but it also depends on your company. Then we can set up the minimum password length to create stronger passwords. So typically, eight characters is the minimum now, or sometimes there's more. So it also depends on your company. And last is password must meet complexity requirements. So this should be always enabled to enforce strong password. So this is where systems is stricter when taking a new password that you're gonna set up. Like it's not gonna take a basic password. And there's different characters that you should meet for the pa creating the passwords. For example, you should have a symbol or a capital letter or a number. So this is how you configure and enforce a strong password policy for AD users through the group policy. So to test if our new password policy works, we can create a test user account and attempt to set a weak password to verify that the password policy is enforced. Make sure to check user must change password at next logon because we want to check if we can change the password to meet the complexity rules. Okay, so let's test the account that you just created. So now log in to the new account. Okay, so it's going to ask us to change the password. So let us type in some basic passwords so we can test if the password complexity was enforced. So I've typed in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in here and see if it will take it. 
So as you can see in here, we are getting this message now that we are not meeting the complexity requirements. So that's a good sign that our policy was enforced. So now I'm going to type in the password that meets all of the requirements in here and also the minimum length required. And let's see if the system will take it and change the password. Okay, so our password was changed, so it means that our policy works. So that is how you can test this. So for our next activity, we are going to do the account lockout policy configuration and we are going to configure an account lockout policy to protect against brute force attacks. So in this activity, we are going to set a threshold for password, how many password attempts they have before their account will be locked out and the duration of the lockout, like how long will they be locked out before they can be unlocked from their accounts. So the higher the threshold is set, the higher the probability also for a successful brute force attack, which gives them more opportunities to guess the password and be successful with the attack. Okay, so we can open the group policy management console again and we can create a new GPO or edit the default domain policy. So I'm going to edit the default policy here. I'm going to right click on it and click on edit. So we are going to choose computer configuration in here and then go to policies and then select Windows settings and security settings and under that will be account policies and under account policies you can see the account lockout policy which we are looking forward to set this up. So let's configure the account lockout duration to 30 minutes. Then let's set the account lockout threshold to three invalid logon attempts just for the sake of this home lab you can choose it depending on your company policy then let's set up the account lockout counter after 30 minutes so to test this policy you can use a test user account and attempt multiple failed login attempts to verify that the account gets locked out then you will see this message that is currently locked out which means that our policy worked Next is user rights assignment and this is assign and restrict user rights to enhance security. This is more of a role based access and we can restrict different user groups for different tasks. For example, we can deny standard users to log in locally or directly to the servers because we don't want them to be messing around with the servers if they can figure out or accidentally log into them. And we can also restrict using or allowing them remote desktop services. So standard users can't just log into different computers or servers remotely using RDS. So for this lab, open the group policy management console. Then you can create a new GPO or edit the default domain policy. I'm going to create a new GPO. So I will right click on this group policy objects and click on new. And let's type in user rights, for example. Expand the group policy objects and look for user rights and right click and click edit. And then navigate to computer configuration, then select policies, then window settings, and select security settings. Under local policies, select user rights assignment. So the first example that we want to do is to deny logon locally. So look for deny logon locally in this list and check define these policies. And then add groups or users who should not log on directly to the servers. So just make sure that you already have groups added in Active Directory. So you have something to add to this lab just like HR group or accounting group. So that's what you are going to add in this restriction. So let's add the HR department for example. Then next, we just want to specify groups or users that are allowed to use remote desktop just like IT department for example. So find allow logon through remote desktop services and then click on define these policy settings and then you can add the users or groups you want to allow to use remote desktop just like the IT department. So let's test the deny logon locally policy first. I'm going to go to my Windows server and I'm going to sign out from admin account. And I'm just going to use a regular user account that is not a member of the IT group. And let's see if we can sign in to the Windows server. So I'm getting this error message, which means that our policy works because I'm not allowed to log on to this Windows server directly because I'm not an admin. The next policy we're testing is allowing log on through remote desktop services. 
So when testing this, just make sure that you're logged in as a regular user and not as admin. So open the remote desktop program. Then type in the name of your server and then click connect and it's going to ask you to enter your password. And then click OK and then as you can see you're getting this error message. So this means that our policy worked because we're not allowed to use remote desktop with this regular user account. Okay, so for our last hands-on lab, it's going to be implementing fine-grained password policies. So this is covering the request from the comment is earlier, which will be applying different password policies to different groups of users. So for example, your organization wants to apply stricter policies to admin accounts while allowing standard users to have more lenient requirements or vice versa if you want admins to have less stricter requirements and more stricter with the standard users so this is how you implement this kind of security policy so the concept of applying and implementing different password policies to different user groups is called the fine-grained password policies in the windows server and we also use different tools other than the group policy management to implement this since this is more advanced settings so for this configuration we're not going to use group policy, but we're going to use a tool that's called Active Directory Administrative Center. And you can find it under your Windows Admin Tools. Okay, so go ahead and open the Active Directory Administrative Center. So to your left side, click on your domain name and then select System and select Password Settings Container because we are going to create a new Password Settings object or PSO. Next, go to the upper right side, click on New and Password Settings. So this is where you're going to type the name for your password settings. We're going to do the admin password policy first. Then next is Precedence. This determines the order in which the policy objects are applied when multiple password settings are applied to a user or a group. So the password setting with the lowest precedence number has the highest priority and will be applied. For example, there's a user with two password setting. First setting with the precedence of 20 and second with the precedence of 30. So the one with the lower number will take precedence and that's the one with precedence 20. So for this admin password setting, I'm going to put number 1 to make it the highest precedence. And below is where you can edit the settings to make stricter policies for admin. For example, set up the minimum password length in here and also enforce password history in here. So I'm just going to put 15 for minimum password length and 3 for password history. Then at the bottom, you can click on add. So we can add the groups where we want this admin password setting applied or implemented to. In this case, I'm going to select the group for IT admins. Then just click on OK and now we have created a password setting object here for admin. Then if you want to create another one for regular users, we can create another password settings object or PSO. And follow the same process, type in the name of the setting and then type in the precedence here. I'm going to use a number 2 just to make it lower than the admin precedence. And below is where you can change the settings to make it less stricter than the admin or more stricter depending on your company policy and same process. You can add the groups where you want this to be implemented and then click on OK and then you have created another password setting object. Okay, so that would be it for this episode of our home lab series. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. And I hope you learned something from this video. Thank you so much and hope to see you guys in the next one.